be here. In this video, I will demonstrate the proper way to determine when an oxidation reduction reaction has occurred. Let's take the simple reaction between carbon and oxygen to produce, produce carbon dioxide. This is a redox reaction, or this is an oxidation reduction reaction. The way I can determine this is by simply writing in my oxidation number. All elements will have an oxidation number of zero. When in a compound, the oxidation number of oxygen from the periodic table is minus two. Carbon has multiple oxidation states. So the way to determine carbon's oxidation number in this case is by understanding that the net charge of the compound is zero. If I have two oxygen atoms, each with a minus two oxidation number, that's a total of minus four. So in order to reach a net charge of zero, carbon must be a plus four. Oxidation reduction or redox reactions may be broken down into a half reaction. The oxidation half reaction for this process occurs through the carbon, where carbon will undergo oxidation or will lose electrons to produce a plus four charge. Clearly, going from zero to plus four, carbon has lost four electrons. Oxygen begins with a zero charge and ends with a negative two charge, so oxygen has undergone reduction. However, in this case, oxygen must gain four electrons to produce two oxygen atoms, or ions, with the negative two charge. <clears throat> because carbon underwent oxidation, it is providing electrons for the reduction process to occur. So in this case, carbon is called a reducing agent. My oxygen will allow carbon to release these four electrons. So oxygen, in this case, is my oxidizing agent. Let's look at what appears to be a slightly more complex equation. Zinc reacts with copper 2 chloride to produce zinc chloride and copper metal. This is also a redox reaction. The oxidation number of zinc initially is zero, which goes to a plus two. The oxidation number of copper is plus two, which goes to zero. Since these oxidation numbers have changed, this is known as a redox reaction. Notice that chlorine or chloride starts at a minus one and ends at a minus one. It did not participate in the reaction and is therefore a spectator ion. If we look at the net ionic equation, we have zinc metal reacting with copper two ion to produce zinc ion and copper metal. The half reactions for this process are as follows. Zinc will undergo oxidation to produce zinc plus two ion by releasing two electrons. That makes zinc my reducing agent since it is supplying electrons for the reduction process to occur. Copper starts as a plus two charge, gains two electrons to become copper metal. Copper is allowing the process of oxidation to occur by accepting the two electrons released by zinc. These two re half reactions must occur simultaneously, by the way. So when copper gains the two electrons from zinc, copper is acting as an oxidizing agent. Now let's observe oxidation and reduction involving nonmetals. In this case, we have sodium bromide reacting with fluorine gas to produce sodium fluoride and liquid bromine. Bromine starts out as bromide, the bromide ion, which will interact with the fluorine gas to produce fluoride ion and liquid bromine. The two half reactions are as follows. Bromine 
starts out as an ion, the bromide ion, which produces bromine, which is diatonic. Therefore, we must balance the mass in this half reaction by placing the coefficient 2 in front of the bromide. Therefore, two bromides undergo oxidation to produce liquid bromine, releasing two electrons. This will make the bromine, or the bromide, our reducing agent. Fluorine starts out as an element, as the elemental fluorine, with a zero oxidation state. It will now gain, or take on, two electrons to become two fluoride ions. This makes fluorine my oxidizing agent.